Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, has anyone here heard of Dwayne Johnson? What nickname is he known for? The Rock, yes. What about Elvis? What is his nickname? The, the King or, or the King of Rock. What about Johnny Cash? The Man in Black, yes. Apparently this was because Johnny usually wore the color black. Now I'm sure you can give me other examples about uh, people who have gone by another name than their birth name. But it's interesting how some nicknames just stick. It's a descriptive feature that the people get a kick out of. Now in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, Isaiah says that a Savior is coming and that his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. You might think of these as eight descriptive names of Jesus, but we'll look at them as four descriptive names. And today we'll look at the first one, Wonderful Counselor. Now, is this name particularly attractive to you? Well, you may not find it offensive. Now, I know some people can or take, can take or leave professional counselors, and maybe they are just a resource when you need them. But what kind of people in your life might be a counselor to you? Your best friend, your spouse, your children, your church, your pastor, your neighbor, your parents. They're all different kinds of people that can help us understand who we are and how we ought to live. But who would you rather listen to? The professionals? Your friends? God? Ourselves? Some random article on the internet? It is interesting now that so much information is available on the internet that people can kind of choose which community of people they want to listen to and then just live according to their guidance. You don't necessarily need to have someone speaking into you uh, to give you some words of wisdom. You can just take out your smartphone and just ask it what you should do. And you can get more than enough answers that you could care for. But one problem with this is that you don't have a real person checking in on you. You don't have someone to call you out when you are making a bad choice. Why does that matter? Because we all make bad choices at times. Even myself. We like to think we have it all figured out, whether we are two or 92. But the problem is, we don't. And Proverbs eleven fourteen says, where there is no guidance, a people falls. But in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. And as Proverbs fifteen twenty two says, without counsel, plans fail. But with many advisors, they succeed. Now, I'm sure you have realized you are a bit overconfident at times. And perhaps there are times when you wish you had a different crowd of counselors around you. Maybe you would have made better decisions. But we all need counsel from somewhere. Now, even the people in the prophet Isaiah's time, didn't have it all figured out. Ahaz, the king of Judah in the southern kingdom of Israel, 
in the year 730 BC, was a ruler of God's people. But he didn't want to seek guidance from God. He wasn't interested in listening to God's messenger, the prophet Isaiah, about making good choices. He thought that trusting in people who worshipped and followed pagan gods was a better option. And while we faithful Christians might think that following anyone besides God is silly, we have to remember that a king is working with all different kinds of advisors. Not only did he work with prophets, he worked with priests, some legal advisors, military leaders, salesmen. There are all different kinds of people that the kings had worked with. There was all different kinds of influences in their lives. Where Ahaz failed in this matter is that he didn't keep the Lord, the creator of the universe, as the number one counselor. As Proverbs 1.7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. I suppose it takes some wisdom to know if you're being counseled by a fool or not. But when we first look to God, then our understanding of how the world works, things begin to fall into place. Now, we do know that Jesus is our wonderful counselor because not only does the Old Testament say so, but so does the New Testament. The Gospel of Matthew not only says that this reference in Isaiah is about Jesus, but Jesus was indeed an amazing counselor, as his teachings are shared throughout the scriptures. I'm sure many of you have heard the Sermon on the Mount, the Sermon by Jesus. The short version of this sermon is the 11 verses, the first 11 verses called the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes say that the blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And then there's also the three-chapter version of the Sermon of the Mount. And in those three chapters, there are all different kinds of things to take away. When you look at all the points that are made out, it can seem like Jesus is just trying to give a list of rules. But I think there's some main points Jesus is trying to get the people to understand. The first point is, if life is difficult for you, take heart in what is going on, as you won't be left behind, and you will indeed be blessed. And as you continue in the sermon, you get the sense that if you think you have it all together, and that you have loved God, here are many things I bet you haven't done. So in this sermon from Jesus, Jesus encourages and blesses those who are feeling lowly, and he humbles the proud. Jesus does a whole lot of counseling in this sermon, but he puts people in their place. I believe Jesus is saying in these three chapters is, look, if you think that the, you have the Christian life all figured out, can you outlove as much as God loves? Or are you busy trying to be more right than the other people around you? Are you busy trying to cheat God's call to love others, thinking that 
it doesn't have a lasting impact on others around you. Or it does. And the reason why you're trying to do these things is because you don't have the wisdom and strength to do what God tells you to do. As we heard in our gospel lesson this morning, when Jesus was finished with his roughly 15-minute sermon, it says, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one who had authority. When the people heard Jesus give this sermon, many realized that he must have had some insider knowledge that could have only come from God. And Jesus wasn't necessarily trying to lead them to be more right as much as to help them recognize that they needed a Savior. That no matter how much they try to act like they have it all together, they aren't fooling God. They are all sinners. But God didn't want them to remain lost and damned in their sinful state. He's hoping that they would receive counsel from God and recognize their sin and repent of their sinful ways. Let their hearts be open to receiving what God has asked them to do. That whatever is driving them to find hope is first focused on the Lord. This habit for a follower of God should be quite simple, but yet people keep seeking other things to replace God's counsel, even today. Even this can be found in counselors, professional counselors themselves. Yes, Christian counselors and therapists are great, but there are several other counselors that might try to give you an excuse for you to hold on to your sin and say that it's okay for you to live in sin because your broken history gives you permission to keep on sinning. But the counsel from God isn't to live with excuses. Instead, his counsel brings hope and it brings purpose. For God sees the mess that you are in, whether it was caused by you or someone else, and he takes that mess and he puts it on his son, Jesus Christ, who took the blame for those sins when he died on the cross. This is the hope for us. This is the hope for all people. Our hope and identity is now someone who belongs into Christ, not our past. We all are someone who belongs to God because Jesus has saved us from our past. And our future is now bright as we belong in God's kingdom. A future where we can now love and care for others as Jesus has counseled us to do where we are brought into a community of believers who are also hoping to seek counsel from the Lord, who also experience the wonderful ways that God has also picked them up from where they were at and used them for his graceful purpose. And now we not only have more joy and energy to embrace the future, but that also may others so that also others around us may embrace this same joy and energy, knowing that God too will care for them as he has and will save them, where we all will live eternally in God's gracious and loving eternal home. This is God's hope for Judah, and this is God's hope for the people in Jesus' time. And this is God's hope for us today. Who would have, have thought that such an amazing counselor would have come such a rather poor family from Mary and Joseph 
who lived in an average city in the city of Nineveh, in the city of Nazareth. But God has counseled us and given us a source for a better future. And through our wonderful counselor, Jesus Christ, let our hearts have hope in him so that we may continue to be counseled by God through his word and his people, hearing and knowing that Jesus is our source for all that is good, right, and true. And that Jesus is our source for our eternal, wonderful future as God will use us to counsel others, sharing hope, truth, love, and forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keeps our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we will now collect our offerings to the Lord. <laughs> 